Folks, horrible advice could lead to a legal nightmare. I'll get into that and then the latest home prices and insights for York Region for week ending November 20th, 2024. A couple days ago, I talked about, this was in the Toronto video, about a, a misconception that if, if you're a buyer, you sign an agreement of purchase and sale, the deposit is due the next day, and you change your mind. And the, the, just the fact that you decide not to hand in the deposit, there's no deal, that's a misconception. And the buyer actually has a legal binding agreement the moment they sign. The deposit, that's something separate. You don't put that, you don't hand the deposit in in the time necessary, which is usually 24 hours, you're in breach. So we talked about that. I, although it seems I got into it, I'm not going to get into it right now. But there's another part to the whole agreement that buyers and their agents many times don't understand how this works and they think it's okay to do what I'm about to explain. And it happened to, to me in our situation a couple years back. We received an offer. We were representing the seller. We received an offer and it was conditional on home inspection. There was no financing condition, conditioning, condition, conditional on home inspection. And, and the buyers, they went through and did their home inspection. And I received the text from the agent saying that everything went great on the home inspection. But the next day, and this is when the condition of home inspection was going to expire, I expected to, to firm up on the transaction. He already told me the inspection went great. He sends me another message saying, buyer could not get financing, they're backing out of the deal. They didn't have a financing condition. And here's where lots of people make a mistake. Because they have a home inspection condition, they feel that they could back out for any reason as long as it's conditional. In this case, the buyer's telling us they couldn't get the financing. But there was no financing condition, so they didn't put that into very beginning. So financing shouldn't be an issue, but that's why they want to back out of the deal. They can't do that, you know, right, right to the point. They can't do that. Now, lots of buyers do that. They, in this case, they said it was a financing issue. What if they just changed their mind? Like, we don't really know. What if another property in that conditional period comes on the market and they like that one better and, and they use any excuse to get out of the deal? The conditions are there for a reason. And within those conditions, yes, you can, as a buyer, legally and you're within your right, without any penalties, back out of the deal within the parameters of that condition. So if there's a home inspection condition, it's got to be something related to home inspection. If it's a financing condition, you can't say the foundation's cracked, I want out of the deal. No, it's it's got to be a financing issue. And this is where people make a lot of mistakes. They're confusing the fact that they have a condition for them to do whatever they want. And in our case, our seller was in a position to sue that buyer for breach because we it was a home inspection condition. And they already told us everything was fine with the home inspection and are finding another reason to back out of the deal. What's really important to also understand there's real estate, buying and selling houses, and then there's contract law. And when you sign these agreement of purchase and sales, yes, it's a real estate transaction, but it also encompasses contract law. And I'm not in any way giving you legal advice. I am familiar with some of these procedures because of what I do every day as a realtor. But you should always be checking these things with your lawyer. Bounce these situations off your lawyer. So if you're a buyer and you want to get out of an agreement of purchase and sell, your realtor can tell you whatever they want to tell you. And they may very well be right in exactly what they're telling you, 
but bounce it off your lawyer. If you're a seller and a buyer's trying to get out of the deal, bounce it off your lawyer. Say, hey, look, here's what's happening. Is, is this right? Does this make sense? Do I have any recourse? In the situation that I explained, that's what we did. The situation that happened to me where the buyer says they couldn't get the financing, but they didn't have a financing condition. They had a home inspection condition. That's what my client did, bounce it off of their lawyer. And my client is in a position to actually go after that buyer to fulfill their end of the, the deal and to actually buy the house. They didn't have a right to back out because of a financing issue. If it even was a financing issue is actually irrelevant. The fact that there's a home inspection condition, that was their only way out. But people have been so cavalier, especially you know when it was the wild, wild west and sales were going through the roof and prices were jumping. You know, One week it seemed prices were going up on a weekly, hourly basis sometimes. For a buyer to back out of the deal, seller, it's like, no problem. I can probably get a little bit more for the house this week versus last week. So sellers were okay, but they're not always going to be that way. And in this market, you gotta like you gotta do things legally the right way, or especially as a buyer, you could really, really get yourself in trouble. And and some realtors don't even know this part of of the agreement and and how that works. So if you take the wrong advice and you don't bounce it off your lawyer you could put yourself in a position to be sued. And it's a very costly, heavy financial burden if you get sued, usually in most real estate transactions. It's never just a couple of bucks and you move on. So be careful how these agreements are written. Be careful when you're going to do something against what's written in the agreement. Bounce it off your lawyer. Get proper legal advice because that agreement of purchase and sale is a legal document. Buying and selling real estate is one thing, but you're involving now contract law, and that's, that's a whole other thing. If this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. And if you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. There's a link to my calendar here, another one below this video in the description. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's get into the numbers. Here we go, folks. We're focused on York Region, specifically Vaughn, Richmond Hill, and Markham for detached properties only. We're going up to week ending November the 20th. Now, just a quick, this is just average sold prices for the last three months. Usually, if you're kind of looking at a, an overall picture of those three cities, Vaughn, Richmond Hill, and Markham, Richmond Hill, usually, it's the one up top here in blue, usually Richmond Hill has the highest average sold price between those three cities. Then if we look at Vaughn and Markham, depending on which week, they jockey for position who has the higher average sold price. So Vaughn, Markham, pretty close in average sold price. Richmond Hill usually has the highest average sold price. We're going to start off with Vaughn, week ending November 20th. 25 detached properties were sold. Six of those were at $2 million or more. All that is actually kind of normal right now. Usually at some point in the fall, well, at the beginning of the fall, we'll see sales going up. And then at some point where we kind of are start thinking, okay, enough of that. We're headed towards Christmas. Then we'll see sales taper down. Well, right now, 25, it's a little bit lower, but not that much. So we've been in a 23, 34, 28, 30. So 25 is kind of since, since October really a, a, a pretty good average of where sales are. So we've not really seen sales come down yet. Average sold price did jump up from one week to the next to 1,770,000. 1,770 is 2% higher than where we were this time a year ago. The median price is also 9% higher versus this time a year ago. 
the dotted line, that's a four week moving average. And it's, it's really tough to, to kind of say which way prices are going. Overall, we've seen them go up, we've seen them go down. Overall, I would say they're kind of flat. If anything, if we kind of go back to beginning of the fall, they might have come down a little bit, but not a lot of big movement one way or, or the other for Vaughn for detached properties. 25 were sold, 20% of those sold at list price or more. If we're looking for a year to date to try to understand what, what are sales this year versus last year, so January refers to November 20th, we're actually up in sales of detached properties by 2.6% for Vaughn only. Listings are tapering down, getting lower. Active listings are becoming fewer each week. And months of inventory is sitting at 4.2. It's up from the previous week. However, 4.2, 4.3, 3.8, it's all in the balanced market phase of between three months to five months. It really hasn't changed much over the span of four, five, six weeks. So that's Vaughn. Richmond Hill, 25 detached properties were sold. 10 of those were at $2 million or more. 10 in one week, that, that's a big number selling at $2 million or more. 25, a little higher actually than normally what we've been seeing. So sales in, 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 sorry, in Richmond Hill picked up a little bit. Average sold price, $1,975,000. And if we kind of look back at the beginning of, of the fall market, kind of looks like average prices have been increasing in, in Richmond Hill, sorry. 1975 is 20% higher than where we were this time a year ago. The median price is 12% higher. And the dotted line, the four week moving average, is trending up. 25 were sold. 28% sold at list price or more. Year over year, however, we're down. We're down 5.8% in sales. 47 were listed. Active listings is coming down. Listings themselves are coming down. And months of inventory, because we did such kind of high sales from one week to the next, months of inventory has come way down to 37 months of inventory. That's for Richmond Hill. Markham, 17 detached properties were sold, which is much less than what we've been seeing over the last few weeks. Two of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price down quite a bit from the previous week. We're now at 1638, 1,638,000. 1,638 is 2% lower year over year. The median price is 1% higher. Since middle of October, it looks like average price and median price gradually trending up. 17 were sold, 59% of those sold at list price or more. Year over year, we're 10.2% lower. I shouldn't say year over year. It's more year to date this year versus last year. We've got more than 10% fewer sales this year in Markham than last year. Listings are down. Active listings trending down. That, that's normal. We're seeing that in most neighborhoods right now. And months of inventory jumped up to 4.7. That's because the sales for this week were so low. Months of inventory jumped up. But before that, we were kind of sitting around three. So let's see what happens over the next few weeks. Here's a summary of months of inventory. In most cases, we're going to see a balanced market. Now, for sure, there'll be the situations where house comes up, it's beautiful, it's, it's in an area where maybe we don't see many listings, and it's priced great. Buyers will jump in and compete for that. But for the most part, it's pretty much a balanced market across the board in Vaughan, Richmond Hill, and Markham. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.